Oh man, do I love food. The LA Times even took notice after I ate at Hugo's nearly every day for 32 years. It was just blocks from my home in West Hollywood. And now I've moved to the motion picture and television fund here in Woodland Hill. And my obsession for good meals continue to simmer. Join me as I explore our food options here on the Wasserman campus. I want to introduce my guest for today's show, this lovely lady sitting in lovely turquoise, I believe. <laughs> this is the hungry girl, Miss Lisa Lillian. Lisa, welcome to the MPTF campus and welcome to the original foodie. Thank you, Phil. It's so good to be here. And I love your shirt. I was going to wear a tie-dye, and I'm glad I didn't, because I think we would have clashed. <laughs> oh, I wish you would have. Well, you know, I, I usually wear a Hawaiian shirt, and for whatever reason, this was hanging next to it, so I, I picked this one. It's It looks delicious. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it looks like somebody spilled something on it, I know. Listen, I, I've got to tell you, Lisa, that... Uh, I don't know too many people that have 14 books. And uh, so when you and I chit-chatted before, and uh, after I had looked at some of your stuff, and uh, you know, you're a very busy lady, how the heck, with all that you do, how did you find time to write 14 books? Um, I think it's because it's what I do. Um, I've been running Hungry Girls since 2004, and I'm lucky enough to have a great team of people. We have our offices in Woodland Hills, you know, five minutes from where you are. And we're just very, very busy and churning out recipes. And it's just, it's my life. Food is my life. Well, the same here, I must say. Uh, speaking of food, I'll tell you, they do a very good job here. I don't know if you've had the pleasure of dining with all of the activities you have been involved when you come on campus, but they do a heck of a job here. I, I take my hat off to them. And they serve about, with everybody, maybe, you know, 300 or better meals a day, three times a day. That's a, that's a lot of food. That is a lot of food. I've had a chocolate chip cookie there, and I have to say it was really delicious. It was great. <laughs> well, what made you tell me about this, or tell our residents too? How did you start this Hungry Girl? Um, well, my background is not really in food, except that I am a consumer of food. My background was in entertainment, actually. I worked in, um, in print journalism for a while, then I worked in television for Warner Brothers for about five years. And sort of when the internet was popping up and websites were cropping up and before social media and before blogs, I thought it would be interesting to just take my love of food and my food obsession and try to make it into a fun little business and build a brand online when it was sort of like no nobody was doing that. It was just a wide open playing field. And I grew up with like, um, a mom who's from Brooklyn, who was always on every fad diet under the sun. She still is. She's 82. And she, uh, you know, she helped me form my love for food. And I wanted to share my knowledge of food and all that I learned, my tips and tricks and my hacks with the world. So I started Hungry Girl as a daily email service, just sharing information. Mm -hmm. And from there? It grew, I mean, unexpectedly. I never spent any money to market the brand at all, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. I just started sending emails and people started sharing them. And at first it was 75 people on the list and then 7,500 people on the list and then 70,000 and then over a million. And it was all about people sharing my enthusiasm for whatever I was writing about with their friends and um, it grew. and. It, it turned into something I never expected. And out of that came so many opportunities to write books. Um, I had a TV show on Food Network for a bunch of years. Oh. I have Hungry Girl Magazine. If anyone can get out to the supermarket, it's coming out tomorrow. This is I a new it. issue. I saw it today. I saw it online. 
And I said to me, I mean, that was something else that I saw. And I said, well, how are you possible? I mean, with all your emails and your recipes and uh, too much. But we, when we spoke earlier, uh, we sort of touched base on some practical foods because you, you do an array of foods and uh, your, what I've noticed, the way you put it together, it's really simple. And I know that we have some visuals that we've added to the program and at some point they will flow. I know one of you are doing a tuna salad and there are some other clips that we're gonna show while we're talking. Oh, good. Yeah, I like to, um, during quarantine, I was just cooking at home. I was bored, I was home. We, we closed our offices for the most part. And so I started cooking a lot at home and I've been sharing videos with you guys over there. And the key to everything in my world is ease and simplicity. Like I am not a trained chef. I, I have to say my mother-in-law used to joke, you know, when I first married my husband, she said, Lisa's great, but she can't cook. And then, you know, 14 cookbooks later, I kind of had the last laugh, but it really just goes to show you how simple everything can be. Everybody can feel like a, a little bit of a chef in the kitchen with very little effort. And a lot of my recipes have very few ingredients and they're all everyday ingredients, things that you already have in your fridge or your pantry. And I think people really respond to it because it's, it's just so simple. Well, no, no, I agree with you, absolutely. Where do you shoot? Do you shoot out here in Woodland Hills somewhere? Or is there a studio nearby that I'm not aware of? Um, well, when I did my show, I shot at a studio, a couple of different studios. One was in Van Nuys, one was in Burbank. But the, the stuff that I do now on Facebook is just me in my kitchen with my iPad, and that's that, and it, it, it works. I feel like the beauty of the Internet is nobody expects anything to be you know, glamorous, everybody wants down and dirty. And you see all the content on TV for the past, whatever, five or six months, all the talk shows, everything has been zoom, zoom, zoom. And I feel like it's just gone off without a hitch. Nobody cares that you don't have the lights in the studio. So I'm happy to do it at home. Plus no one knows if I'm wearing pajama bottoms. Yeah, well, yes, we, we had that with, uh... Uh, one of our residents, uh, we were uh, they were doing a piece on uh, Jen Show, uh, uh, organized chaos, and he was doing a piece, and he was with us, and we were doing Zoom, and then all of a sudden he got up to there was a knock at the door, and he was he was dressed to kill from the top up. <laughs> As he walked to the door, he forgot he just had underwear on. So, no, oh wow, I was going to say, maybe he was wearing shorts, but no pants. Amazing. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's really something else. But you, you also, with all the time and, uh, that you've been involved and whatnot, you still find time to come on canvas. Tell us about your visitations to the Mary Pickford House. Well, I love MPTF. I love being on campus. About a year and a half ago, I started volunteering and how that started was I have a dog that I think you can see, maybe she's in the background, you can see her sleeping on the couch. And she's really an amazing, uh, you know, soul. And I thought it would be really fun to share her um, on campus. So I started taking Lolly. Lolly, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> to visit. Um, we spent a lot of time at Mary Pickford House. We have a lot of friends over there. It is so wonderful. Everybody is incredible. And Lolly and hopefully I, too, bring a lot of joy to the residents over there. And I cannot wait to be back on campus. Well, we can't, uh, you know, we can't wait to have all of you guys back. Because you, you've done so much cooking at home and doing on television, have you stepped out to some restaurants around town here or even oh, across the hill? Of course, yes. Well, you know, not as much, of obviously, since late March, yeah. but um, because I cook so much at work and for a living and it's what I do, I really enjoy dining out like most of the time. So it's been unique um, preparing all my food at home mostly for the past few months. But other than that, I'm like big time restaurant foodie person and I go all over everywhere what does your if I may ask what does your husband do 
He um, is a TV creator, producer, writer. He's created a whole bunch of shows, um, most of them for Nickelodeon. He's like, um, he's a, I have to say he's a comedy genius. I can give him some props. <laughs> comedy, that's tough, boy. It's, it's really tough to write good, funny comedy. I know he's like he's the funniest person I've ever met in my life, hands down. So I'm very fortunate to have that constant entertainment. <laughs> does he uh, does he enjoy your eating and your food? Does he like to eat himself? He does. He you know he loves to eat. He actually comes from a family that had um, the, his whole family. They had been overweight most of their lives. He recently lost a lot of weight. And the funny thing is I love using him as my guinea pig for my recipes because he has very like low tolerance for anything that tastes low calorie and healthy and diety. And my whole brand is built on making better for you, you know, smarter, healthier swaps. So he has been very, very helpful in, you know, letting me know that the recipes work. So I, I use him as my as my guinea pig as often as he'll let me. There you go. Oh, well, that's, that's one well And he, being a writer and being in the business himself, then he has a certain amount of time at home. Well, you know, now more than he used to, because everything has shut down a lot, but like he used to write, I'll tell you a funny story. So he created a show called iCarly that was very popular on Nickelodeon. And I remember he, in one episode, he created spaghetti tacos. So we had one of the main characters making dinner and they were making spaghetti tacos and I made fun of him because I said, nobody is gonna put a carb in a carb. You don't put spaghetti in a taco, you just don't do that. And it took off and I can't even tell you, spaghetti tacos took over the world. There was a New York Times article on the popularity of spaghetti tacos and sure enough, he taught me a thing or two about putting carbs in carbs and it's okay. <laughs> Well, when I saw you, I saw your show the other day, uh, you were doing, what did you, you, you used uh, for the crepe? You used a wonton? Yes, I use wonton wrappers uh, or wonton. egg roll wrappers. Like I'm always trying to find ways to, to lighten things up and like a wonton wrapper at the supermarket in the refrigerated section, it's like a, it's a healthy sort of, it's vegan, it's low calorie. They crisp up so nicely in, in the oven or the toaster oven even, or the air fryer. And I use them for so many different things. I like to just take everyday ingredients and use them in unexpected ways. Well, I try to keep myself together in the food department as uh, like you, uh, an original foodie. The beautiful thing with all the craziness, the food doesn't stop. <laughs> People have to eat. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. And, and, and they're wonderful. I mean, we we do eat pretty good. I must say. I, must say. I know. Like one of my favorite things to do. Like I'll, there's, there are a few residents that I like to visit, and they don't always have the biggest appetites. But I'm always trying to take. You know, I'll create little ice cream sundaes by taking the ice cream that's always available in the freezer and mixing it with cookies. And sometimes I'll bring in a can of. Cool Whip or whatever, Ready Whip, and make a little on-the-fly ice cream sundae. So I'm constantly, even when I visit, trying to bring snacks, you know, make people happy with food, which um, seems to be the common denominator for all of us. Yes, yes, no, no, it works very well. Is there any particular kind of foods that happen to be your favorites? I do love sushi, and growing up in New York, like born in Brooklyn, I'd never ate sushi really very much until I moved to California, which was around 20 years ago. But sushi is always a favorite of mine. Um, by the way, Gelson's has incredibly amazing spicy tuna rolls, which is a very unexpected find for the Valley. You would think that you'd have to go to a fancy sushi restaurant. Gelson's spicy tuna is phenomenal. So mm -hmm. sushi is a favorite. And I, like you, I eat a lot of chicken and fish and fruits and vegetables. I try to for the most part, I am eating very healthy foods, um, but because I do crave a lot of like delicious foods, I used to joke, I have the palate of like a 12 year old boy. Like I love junk food, so I will always find a way to make it healthier in a very simple way and enjoy it as much as I can. Well, I, one of my wonderful New York stories, if I may 
I'm born here. I'm born and raised on the other side of the hill, and uh, I, I did live. I did li live in Baltimore, Maryland, for a year and a half. And, uh, so, when I got introduced during that year and a half to that whole seasons and all of those seasons, I said, "No, it's time to get back in the car and get back to paradise." But I remember one day coming into New York, and I was going to stay with my aunt in Brooklyn and uh, who makes the greatest gefilte fish that I've ever had. It's just homemade gefilte fish, oh my God. And uh, I took a cab from the airport and got to the place and went in and the hugs and everything. And then I said to myself, oh my God, I forgot my camera. And my aunt says, well, where did you leave it? I said, I left it in the cab. And she says, well, that's the end of that camera. And we're in the middle of dinner, and the doorbell rings, and she goes to answer, and there is the cabbie returning my camera. That's it. I'll never forget it. And that's one of my. Yes, yes, fantastic. It was. Did you take a picture of him? I hope you did. <laughs> I should have. I, I really Absolutely. Did. The most I, honest man in America. <laughs> right, you're absolutely right. But I, I have a wonderful collection of what I do when I go out to eat. Is I will, and I will show you. I will always have, always take a business card, and I have two files like this, and they are loaded with business cards from restaurants, and all of these restaurants are places that I've eaten. And this is just a, a, a hobby of mine. I always ask people if I could have a business card when I walk into a restaurant. And <laughs> they, sometimes they get very concerned and they say, well, is something wrong? <laughs> oh, everything is fine. But uh, uh, some very interesting business cards during my uh, visits to the UK, uh, larger than ours, and then you run into places that really don't have a card, but their to-go menu is their card. Their card, right. Yeah. That would be hard to fit in that little file box, Phil. No kidding. I've, I've had to cut one. There was a wonderful <laughs> kosher restaurant in a kosher fish restaurant. We went to, and the card was just a little wider and a little bit taller. And it's in here, uh, but I, I had to cut it. But, uh, do you take notes? Do you take notes and put notes in the little files about your favorite foods or what you've eaten at those restaurants? You know, uh, you, you know, this has come up uh, recently. One of the residents asked me the same thing the other day, and uh, I said, you know, I don't, and uh, just I regret that I just didn't think of even taking a pen and writing the date on the back of the card. Uh, you know, I have one here, uh, example, you say a menu, uh, Maple Drive, you know, in Beverly Hills. Well, their oh, yeah. card happened to be a very, the same size as a regular business card, but you open it up and it's their menu or part of their menu. Or most that, of wait, and that restaurant was the greatest. They Didn't they close many years ago? I'm not sure. I mean, uh, I, I can visualize it and it's very possible because it, it was doing very well, and it was a place to go, and, you know, all of that, and it just, I don't know. I it was guess. one of my favorite restaurants, and they had the best gazpacho ever, my favorite gazpacho of all time. Well, you know, they make a pretty good gazpacho here, I must tell you. I, uh, I am a fan of gazpacho, and uh, uh, if you, well, if you know, and you probably do, if you ever have an opportunity to go to Arizona, uh, everybody in Arizona has gazpacho, and everybody makes it different. It's uh, it's it's quite something. But, no, no, gazpacho is a, a big favorite of mine. Yeah. But uh, no, it's uh, it's really uh, something else. I just, I mean, when I when I watch you, and I watched a couple of your shows, and I see you move in the kitchen. And the way you move, and your how familiar you are with the food food you're using, and to do the preparation, I mean, I take my hat off to you. 
Hey everyone, it's me, Lisa Lillian, also known as Hungry Girl. I am live in my kitchen. Today I've got Jamie on the phone. Hey Jamie. Hi Lisa. How are you? Good, excited. Good. Are you in the audience? I'm waiting for anyone to be in the audience. Oh, of course. I see th all of a sudden three hey people. Everyone, it's me. Oh, I heard myself. All right, there's Betsy. Betsy, you like popped into the audience first. How come I'm not surprised? Uh, we have, I wish I could read everyone's names. We have Amanda is here. We have Krista. We have Mary, my sister. Okay, so if you saw the post today, I said I was making an all-American dessert shake. Then I just said that I was making a classic American dessert shake. I am in red, white, and blue. Don't I look like I'm ready for July 4th? Jamie? Oh, I didn't know I, I was supposed to answer that. Do I look, I look ready? <laughs> No, this this shirt I found like literally with the tags on it in a box that had been sealed for years. And then I'm like, what what am I gonna wear that's American today? And then I pull it out and there the tags are on the shirt. And I'm like, this looks pretty all American. And I have star earrings. So I am ready for this. And what this is, the people guessed it, Jamie. They knew it was gonna be an apple pie. Freeze. So today I'm making an apple pie a la mode protein freeze. If you are excited about the idea of this, click like right now, click hearts, whatever, whatever emotions you're feeling. I don't know, care. What are the other emotions that you can click on? Don't click sadness, <laughs> whatever you do, because hopefully you're happy and happy enough to share this, happy enough to tell your fellow audience members what a fan of Hungry Girls Daily Emails you are. And if you're not a fan of the Daily Emails, it's probably because you don't get them. And if you don't get them, you should. So if you want to sign up, go to hungry-girl.com. So tonight, I am making an apple pie a la mode protein freeze. And I'm giving things away, of course, because I know you guys are only here for the prizes, right? Yes, admit it. Yes. To give our resident just a taste of the show, uh, Lisa, for those that haven't seen it, uh, I just, uh, I just want to say to you, I want to thank you very much for taking the time and uh, the energy of coming our way. You're one of the terrific people that uh, help keep this place together, and uh, I have a lot of fondness for folks like you. So uh, I just want to say thank you very much. And I usually sign off by saying, till we eat again. <laughs> Chew the right thing. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Lisa, very much. God bless.